Uh, you know I love my video games. And earlier this year, I can't remember when, but I reviewed the LEGO DC game, which was fantastic, you know, with Batman, Superman, all the characters in it. While LEGO have also made one for all the Marvel characters, how does it stack up featuring the likes of Spider-Man, the X-Men, the Avengers? Here's my review. Our victory is nigh. We can't escape the long reach of justice. Now I have some power to play with. I'm gonna spangle you till you see stars. Oh. I'm so excited about the game, which I have to show you. Now, let me tell you why. Firstly, earlier this year, not sure you remember, I reviewed this game, which was Batman 2 DC Super Heroes, which greatly expanded the universe of characters you could use. I was playing as Green Lantern, I was playing as Superman, Wonder Woman, The Flash, etc. and I had a blast playing this. So what have LEGO done to really just expand it? Well, they switched allegiances, just for the game, to this. Marvel. Before it was DC Comics, now you get to play as all of your favorite Marvel characters. I'm a huge, huge comic fan, which is why playing this game is like a dream come true. We're talking about 155 characters you can play with. That does not even include the DLC you can get. For example, the Asgardian DLC, where you can play as Jane Foster, played by Natalie Portman in you know the, the movie 4 and stuff like that. So I'm sure you know who I'm talking about. I mean, just the cast is amazing. You're playing as Spider-Man, you start off as Iron Man and the Hulk, suddenly you're an Avenger, suddenly you're one of the Fantastic Four, you can play as Aunt May, you can even play as really obsolete and lousy characters such as Howard the Duck, you can even play as Aunt May, who is Peter Parker's aunt. Not sure what she can really do, but it's still fun just to have a little gander around the town with her, the town of Manhattan. Now on that note, not only is the cast massive, so is this open gameplay world which you can tinker around with outside of the actual storyline. By that, head over to New York, just bounce around, go to the Empire State Building, go to the Brooklyn Bridge, do whatever you want to do and just have fun. Now you can unlock this free open world the moment you complete the first level, which is pretty fast, pretty easy. It's just for you to understand the controls, etc. And I mean, you can do anything. You can go find Gwen Stacy, make her jump off the Brooklyn Bridge, just like in the comics. It's so much fun. Imagine this open world concept being like GTA meets Lego. That's effectively what it's like. And you can fly around as Iron Man, you can do whatever you want. Now, obviously, a lot of these characters, you have to unlock them as the gameplay progresses and you have to play the story mode to do so. So if you want to have a bounce around Manhattan and New York, well, it'd be very limited unless you start unlocking the characters, but it's so much fun. It keeps the gameplay going and going and going and you keep coming back to the game. Holding Grand Central hostage at rush hour? Now that's criminal. Now, for the story mode, it's not part of an open world. It follows a trajectory, and it's a really, really fun one. There's a collective story. You start off with seeing the Silver Surfer. Remember him, the Fantastic Four movie? Played by Lawrence Fishburne, I think, the voice. Anyhow, he comes down to Earth, and suddenly a missile hits him, and it's all these cosmic cubes, just like the cubes you see in the Avengers movie and also Captain America, etc., are scattered around the globe. And it's all because of Doctor Doom and Loki. Now, Doctor Doom wants to build his Doom Ray of Doom, very, very cool name, and he's helped out by Loki. So, of course, Nick Fury, Samuel L. Jackson in the movies, enlists the help of all the heroes around the world to help him grab these cosmic cubes before of course, the villains get it. And I'm talking a whole lot of villains as well, like Dr. Octopus, the Sandman, etc. So much fun in the storyline. And as you're progressing, you'll notice that there's one major villain in that chapter, and you have to basically chase him through whatever puzzles you have to get through, and you'll come across lesser known villains or smaller villains to get to the ultimate villain of the chapter. So you're constantly facing different challenges. Now, in terms of that challenge though, you'll see it's targeted more to the younger demographic 
of Marvel. But it's okay, it's a lot of fun. Anyway, you just have to figure out what that puzzle is and figure out your character's ability to unlock that puzzle. Pretty simple. Think of it this way. Some characters have got more brains. For example, Fantastic Four character, Fantastic, uh, Mr. Fantastic, sorry, has got more brains than Captain America. So certain controls only he can operate, whereas you need to use a shield of Captain America to do other things. So no hero really feels that depleted. I've had so much fun just exploring the city. It's a, it's a great, great game. Gameplay is fun, buttons are simple, and you'll breeze through the storyline in about 12 hours, give or take, depending how you play the game. I cannot recommend it more. If you have a friend, it's an easy process to just jump in and jump out and you just press start to activate that. It'll go into a split screen mode so you're not tethered to the other person. So a lot of fun in that aspect. I'm gonna give this game a solid 4.5 out of five. It really, really is cool. Check it out if you're a fan of Marvel Comics. You wanna explore a universe which ties in so many little things from well, about 40, 50 years of Marvel history, you have to give this game a go. It's more expansive than what we saw with Batman, but oh, it is so much fun. I need to get back to it, because I want to play as Spider-Man. Wow, so much for taking the subway down to the Bugle. Guess I'll just have to fight my way through it. Thanks for swinging by, Spider-Man. You Avenger guys are really great at making a mess. Ah, sadly we've come to the end of another episode of Gadget Nation. It's just the start of season 11, so you can expect me back on your screens next week for plenty more exciting content. Another superhero video game, for example, and a fantastic camera. Promise you, same time, same place, next week here on Astro Awani. Big shout out to San Francisco Coffee House for hosting us here today. My name is Adam Carabas. Till next time.